Nationals. And though the team took some steps forward this year, there really wasn't much hope that the hometown club would be playing in this Sunday's game. The Cardinals, in fact, haven't won an NFL championship since 1947 when they were the Chicago Cardinals. Since then, the Redbirds have migrated twice, first to St. Louis and then here to Arizona. But success has eluded the franchise in each location. While bad ownership is often blamed, there's also another peculiar possibility, the possibility of a curse brought on by the 1925 NFL title that the Cardinals claim as their own, a title that fans of another long forgotten team still insist belongs to them. Nestled in the hills of central Pennsylvania is a tiny coal mining town, home to Yingling Brewery, but otherwise a speck on the map compared to the great metropolises of the NFL. According to residents here, though, it's the scene of the greatest miscarriage of justice in the league's history, a travesty that has never been righted, and that to this day haunts two communities, one of them thousands of miles away, the other right here in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. To fully understand, you have to go back to the 1920s. America's big cities were roaring and glamorous, while dusty coal towns like Pottsville were driving the country's engine with backbreaking, dirty, thankless work. They were the ones that provided the raw materials for probably the greatest industrial revolution in the history of the world, and they did it sort of one fistful of coal at a time. Football provided a much needed diversion. The town's team wasn't exactly the Chicago Bears or the New York Giants. In fact, the Pottsville Maroons played in the Anthracite Coal League. That is, until they joined the NFL in 1925. Back then, all you needed was a $500 franchise fee, and if the NFL agreed, you could get in. The team's roster was a mix of minors and young college grads. Former Lafayette College quarterback Jack Ernst. Charlie Berry, a wide receiver who said his ability to hold onto the ball could be traced back to his days delivering slippery milk bottles. And the heart of the team, the running back known simply as Push Him Up Tony. Tony Laton was forced into the mines at 11 and spent eight years underground. One of his last jobs that he did was pushing two ton coal carts up to the railroad tracks. That perfectly mimicked the sort of muscle groups and the, and the activity of running backs. When he uh, hit the line and didn't go through, he'd go back 10 yards and get another flying start and, and plunge through. The team's coach was Dick Rauch, a Penn State grad whose main expertise was bird watching. When he first came to town, they said, how can a bird watcher coach this team? But I think the town gravitated to him as he started winning games. Coach Dick Rauch's idea was, these guys are gonna become part of our community. They're gonna live here every day, we're gonna practice every day, and this was revolutionary at the time. All of Pottsville was behind the Maroons. And in their first NFL season, they weren't just good, they were great. The Maroons outscored their opponents by an average of over 20 points, and by early December, they were nine and two. The league championship would be determined by winning percentage and the Maroons and the Chicago Cardinals were neck and neck. The Cardinals said, well, let's have these sort of, uh, you know, coal cracker hillbillies come over to Comiskey Park, we'll beat them up, and then it will be the unanimous choice for NFL champion. Well, Puncil just ran wild out there. The Maroons beat the Cardinals 21-7, earning what they thought was the championship, and they returned to a hero's welcome at the Pottsville train station. They were waiting for the train, and when they heard the whistle blow and the old locomotive away down the line, they cheered. <laughs> the roar was something, well, I'm telling you, it was fabulous. I mean, imagine a little town today like Pottsville. They were world champions. Just six days later, the Maroons challenged mighty Notre Dame. Back then, the NFL was considered second rate to the college game, and the famed four horsemen confidently rode into Philadelphia's Shibe Park. Yet after a late field goal, the next day's headlines proclaimed the unthinkable. The Maroons' 9-7 victory would have far-reaching effects. It was the Maroons defeating Notre Dame and the famed four horsemen that really made the nation stand up and accept the NFL and pro football for what it was. They beat the greatest football team ever assembled at a time when people thought the NFL was a joke 
and the NFL paid him back by destroying the Maroons. What should have been the Maroons' best moment became its most controversial. Their Philadelphia rivals, the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets, complained to the league that Pottsville violated a little-known territory rule by playing the Notre Dame game in Philadelphia. NFL President Joe Carr's decision was swift and harsh. The Maroons were kicked out of the NFL, and the 1925 title eventually went to the Cardinals. The Cardinals never laid claim to it until the Bidwell family bought them in 1933. And it was only then that they stepped in and said, oh, we'll take this championship, even though we didn't earn it. Over 70 years later, the residents of Pottsville haven't forgotten. They say the fight to reclaim what is theirs will continue. Meanwhile, the Maroons' presence is felt all around town. A picture of the 1925 team hangs on the high school bulletin board. A trophy made of, what else, coal, sits in the center of town. And like any good NFL city, there's a bar for the team. The locals' choice on tap? Stolen championship ale. I was born and raised and lived all my life in this region. I know what kind of people, when they feel like an injustice has been done, uh, it, the fight will continue until it's been righted. Yeah, the 1925 championship belongs to Possible because they won it fair and square on the field of battle. I think the Bidwell family should give it up. Neither the Bidwells nor the NFL have any plans to re-examine the 1925 championship. And Pottsville residents claim this decision haunts a franchise that, despite shifting cities, can't seem to escape misfortune. Because the Cardinals stole our championship, they'll always have a curse upon them. When our championship is returned to us, we'll consider lifting the curse. It's inexplicable in a league that basically legislates parity, that the Cardinals could be so bad for so long. I was getting calls from Arizona, please stop this curse. I said, no way until that title is given back to Plasma. I don't know about curses, I, I, but I do know that I'm not alone among uh, Maroon supporters when I say that we hope that this is the closest the Cardinal organization gets to the Super Bowl hosting one. As Peter King joins us now for King's Corner, a footnote on those Pottsville Maroons. The league actually briefly took up the question of whether they should reconsider that 1925 title. That came up a few years ago. The vote was 30 to 2 against any reconsideration with Bill Bidwell's Arizona Cardinals being among the 30. We're shocked at that. Yeah. Just shocked. Let's move.